Hello my dear friends, welcome back to another episode on the channel Perfume Guru and today we have a very interesting fragrance to talk about. This is on subscribers request, Dior Sauvage and this was released in the year 2015. This is the Eau de Toilette version that we are going to talk about. Later, later in 2016, I think there was this very cool spray release. Yes, it was a canned spray version, basically the same thing which was more diffusive like a deodorant and the smell was absolutely similar and uh, in 2018, which is this year, they have released an, or the Parfum version of this. So guys, back to 2015. I was in uh, Melbourne, touring Australia, and I did see a lot of counters back then for Dior Sauvage. The marketing was just wild for this particular fragrance. Johnny Depp all over the posters, huge billboards. And I thought this is something very special, and did, I, I, I did go to the counter, sniff it. Uh, and I was pretty impressed with the opening because it was something very nice, sweet, um, you can say refreshing, very unique for a designer fragrance. Before I sampled the Eau Sauvage, I absolutely loved uh, these perfumes. I mean, I still love them. The Eau Parfum, the Eau Intense, you know, those kind of beautiful niche-like, almost niche-like fragrances, artsy. Uh, fragrances um, done by Francois de Machy. and by the way he's the same perfume he, he's the same perfumer for this uh, uh, new Sauvage series. Now the Eau Sauvage series the original was released in the 1960s from the house of Dior and it was aimed towards a more uh, sophisticated crowd mature crowd and uh, you would you would get your regular uh, uh, you know, things from an aromatic fuchsia, you would have your citruses, you would have oak moss, powdery lavender. In the dry down, you would get musk, sandalwood, etc., etc. Maybe a bit of incense thrown in just to give it that exotic sort of uh, touch. However, Sauvage does not in any way represent the original Eau Sauvage um, DNA. This is a very, com this is a very different perfume aimed more towards the modern man, but a man who does not live in uh, high-rise buildings, but who is more outdoorsy, more of an adventurer than an office guy. And it kind of achieves that with uh, a beautiful combination of fresh citruses and this lovely synthetic note in perfumery, which is known as Ambroxan. And these are the only two uh, notes mentioned on their official website. So it was kind of strange because when you look at a picture with fossilized amber, you know, the smell which you get in your mind is obviously more of a resinous, incense type and not ambergris. Ambergris is completely different and ambroxan is supposed to be a synthetic replacement for ambergris. That's what I know. Correct me if I'm wrong. So what do you expect out of this fragrance is an aquamarine sort of oceanic vibe, which it quite successfully delivers. However, there's, there's also this sweet... Uh, piney, cold mountain air sort of vibe thing going on in, in here, which is more, uh, some, which is something which you can find in more cheaper fragrances and deodorants, Axe deodorants. There was this particular fragrance which it completely reminds me of uh, from the house of Victorinox. It's known as Altitude and it has that sweet metallic sort of cooling thing going on in the perfume, which which is uh, something quite similar that I get in the dry down of this fragrance. However, I must say the opening with that beautiful sweet bergamot is absolutely phenomenal for a designer fragrance. But the sharp lavenderish soapiness or whatever, it's the vetiver or whatever, probably not a mentioned note, of course, not all the accords will be mentioned. Uh, probably Dior just wanted to surprise the audience with uh, something special, but sadly that, that doesn't happen. Because the opening of that lovely bergamot, which you also find in Roja's new very popular Elysium, which I think is a beautiful Sauvage inspired fragrance. It is definitely Sauvage inspired, but it is just so special in on multiple levels. You can say the art of blending, the composition, the ingredients, it's, it's, it's proper niche like. But this is more aimed towards the common man. I still would say the opening the, with, the, with the lovely bergamot is fabulous because it lasts for a very long time. And the pink pepper blast, however, adds too much soapiness to this fragrance. It kind of irritates me because it's really sharp and it's very powerful, almost going nuclear on my skin. And that's where I think that this fragrance is not too friendly for office because if you work in a closed environment, this would really easily penetrate into anyone's 
uh, personal space and it might intimidate them. So that's where um, I don't think this fragrance is very versatile as far as work environment is concerned. But they, they really did not uh, aim the office going guy with this. They were looking at an adventurer, an outdoor uh, guy and this is definitely more of an outdoor fragrance because when you are going out, this is a very diffusive fragrance. It will leave a huge trail of sillage. The projection is just beastly for the first two or three hours, so especially in a hot climate, hot weather. This is just one of the best fragrances to have for the price, for the young guys, for the mature men who are not too fussy with perfume notes and composition art of blending etc etc like me. So for those kind of people, they might have to look into Rojas Elysium or some other lovely summer fragrances from the house of Profumum Roma or, 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 or your other very popular fragrances houses from Italy, Sergioff etc etc. But for the masses, this is an absolute uh, beauty because it serves all the needs. It, it is a loud fragrance. It's a very, very uh, pleasing fragrance for most people. And uh, especially if they are, you know, uh, not too close to you. So this fragrance will reach out to them and it will definitely attract them. This will definitely get heads turning, especially in the places where uh, you do not get a lot of designer fragrances. So there it might be a unique fragrance, but in, uh, uh, in the Western countries, especially the metropolitan cities, I don't think this is a very safe bet because it's too popular. It's almost um, the, the, the La Nuit de l'Homme of... Uh, 2015 and onwards. Now it's 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 there in every man's scent cupboard. So that's one that's one thing that uh, pretty much uh, nails it right there uh, for the niche loving audience. Uh, I feel the fragrance could have been much better, especially with what Francois Demarchi has created in the past. I really expected some wonders here, but maybe my nose has evolved a lot over the last three years. So I really don't don't blame him because this is a pretty good fragrance. However, it completely lacks depth. There's no oomph to the original ingredients. There's this sweet hayish vetiver, cool mintiness in the dry down, which is nice, but it has been done in most other designer fragrances. In fact, some fragrances by Prada are much better represent representations of these similar ingredients like the, the new Prada uh, Luna Rosa black edition or whatever. It's, it's pretty much uh, better in every way. And then you have Rojas Elysium, just in case you have a little bit of extra cash remaining somewhere in your bank accounts, you might just go and get that. It causes a bit of olfactory fatigue. I have two bottles, one for me, one for my father. So I know that the performance on the Rojas Elysium is absolutely beast. And I'm talking about the blue bottle, the cologne version, not the perfume, perfume version. So guys, that was my opinion of the Air Savage. Now, as far as performance is concerned, this definitely gives me a mileage of 8 to 14 hours. And in summers, it just lasts and lasts. So no problems at all there. I don't need to reapply the fragrance and it's pretty strong. It gets me the compliments. It gets me the attention, but I'm not the one looking for that because I'm really not comfortable wearing this fragrance, especially with the top notes. It the pink pepper, you know, kind of chokes me and I feel that hot, humid bubble of sweetness, which I get from most designer summery colognes and also hand washes that are based on aqua notes, aqua marine notes, oceanic notes. Yeah, it's a very common synthetic oceanic sort of molecule which gives these perfumes this sort of wetness and uh, that's where you know it kind of disappoints but overall it's a good fragrance to have so just in case you haven't sampled this original which I am not really sure about because it's already 2018 some of you may have tried the new perfume version also so just in case you have please mention what are the subtle differences whatever the subtle differences major differences you find between these two fragrances I would love to hear from you and yes that was my review of Dior's very popular Sauvage or the Toilette version so see you again in another review uh, with probably a lovely author from Ensar. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.